Hi. Um, we're at the point now where the kittens are ready to be upgraded. So they're going to be upgraded from their Alaska, which is their birthing cage and has been their home for their first three and a bit weeks, three, three and a half now. They're going to be upgraded to a Coco, which is quite a large cage. It's about a metre long and I don't know, must be about 70 or 80 centimetres tall, but it's um, much bigger than they're used to, much bigger height. The way that I decided that they were ready for the move was they are very capable around their little cage. They can climb up the bars all over, balance very easily on pretty much anything. So they're ready for that extra height. And just to be safe, I've added a nice kind of deep layer of substrate here. Um, so I thought I'd film filling it and explain a bit why I'm putting various things in, because I thought that might be useful for you. Um, so the first things, I've got a couple things in already and that's mostly because they're so faffy. Well, in the, in the, um, sorry, in the wheels case, it's very faffy to fit in. Didn't fancy trying that in the, um, kind of on the video, just because, yeah, you want two people to fit a Tic Tac really, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and I've just put that in because then I fill it with substrate so I don't have to be running back and forward. So this is just basically a cat litter tray, um, nothing fancy, a dead cheap one. Um, and all I've done is put litter in it. So it's their first litter tray. Um, I've put it in there partly because I don't use shelves in any of my cages unless they're litter trays because they stink. <laughs> um, rats, if you give them the opportunity, so I like to have several different areas where I'm happy for them to go to the toilet on, but then give them little opportunity to not use it, then what you find is um, they're very good. <laughs> they will litter train themselves because they don't really have very many other options. They could in theory poo in the hammocks and such, but if there's a litter tray right outside, they'd actually rather not. So I try and put a few different levels of litter trays in there. And at this stage, it's perfect for the babies to start trying it out. Um, I don't expect them to get it for a little while, but over time, mum will kind of use it and they will pick up using it themselves too. Um, so the wheel has been in their um, Alaska. It's a 14 inch tic tac. It's really kind of plenty big enough for three week old babies. It's, I find it, it's not bad for my does, but I have quite low do, long does. So I do prefer a bigger, the, the 16 inch for them, which is what's in my main cages. Um, but this is absolutely fine for Mog to run on a bit as well. Um, I'm not worried about it. So it's a good wheel for them to start off with. It's a little lighter than the 16 inch though, to be honest, they run so freely. Um, you don't really have to worry about it. So we have our thick layer of substrate. Um, they've now gone to a mix of little mats and bed mats. So one thing I do make a point of doing with the kittens is mixing up the different substrates and, and um, such that I use. Same with items and so on. It's all about um, building them a sense of kind of familiarity of a lot of different things and, and a lack of fear for the unknown. So they've never had little Macs before. They've had a little bit of bed Macs in their thing, so it's completely new to them. And that will be interesting in its own right. Um, so we kind of play that kind of game, see what I can put in that's new. I'll sometimes put some familiar stuff in as well and um, that'll help them get comfortable so not everything's changing all at once but there's lots of new things that are coming on a regular occurrence. Um, plus to be honest I really don't want to get, I've only got three tic tacs and two, two of them are in use in the main cage and I don't want to have to get them out and put them back on again. Fitting a 14 inch to a cage that I can manoeuvre around is fine, fitting a 16 inch to the top of my um, Ventura is a nightmare, so I'm not going to do that. Right, so cage setup. The things I start off thinking about when I'm putting together a cage um, for kittens is you need a lot more connections than normal. Um, so I need a bit of structure around here and what I'm going to use for that is some of my beloved branches. Now, um, most of my setups feature branches in some form or other. Um, they're excellent climbing for rats. They are kind of nice and sturdy every now and again they might get a bit whiffy which is true and i just stick them outside these have actually just come out from the snow and <laughs> um, they've been outside kind of cooling down for a bit so i've, I've brought them in um, a couple of days ago to dry out properly and give them a clean over but smell free i just smell of kind of outdoors which is perfect really so i'll probably play around a bit with this um, it's the first time actually i've set up this cage which means that i probably can't probably um, mess around more than normal that one doesn't fit and i'm not going to be um sawing branches down and what i often use on some of my branches is i have a little bit of garden wire which will just let me attach it to the cage um, what I'm looking to do at first is, it's the same as I do in my big cages, is I want to create a bit of a structure around the middle. 
um, and that will dictate how all the stuff fits around it. So if I can make a central thing, I can use it to attach things to, to think about where I want to place things. Um, it's quite quite a useful way of doing it. It's particularly useful in massive open front and fronted cages, but it's an approach that I end up applying to kind of most different things. So in terms of branches, if you want to use them, um, there are various different options. So this one and this one are just from Rat Safe Woods. That's from Ash. This is from Mountain Ash Rowan. Both have been well dried out. I'm pretty sure that one's uh, Blue Beach, I think. Um, but I picked them up in, in kind of either in pe from people's gardens where I know what wood it is, or if I happen to be able to identify the wood when I'm in a forest and it's entirely one tree, then I can pick it up from that. You want things that are um, rat safe, so your best bet for checking that out is check for a good rabbit safe list. Um, if it's rabbit safe, it'll be rat safe. There are more things that are rat safe than rabbit safe because rats don't eat them in the way that rats do. They just kind of gnaw them slowly. Um, the other way of looking at it is if it's something that has an edible fruit or not to humans when it's raw, so you're not talking about conkers, for instance, horse chestnut trees are not safe, but a sweet chestnut tree is. And then what you need to do is make sure it dries out fully. So for a little branch like this, it's going to take a week or two to turn from a green wood on the inside to kind of proper matured wood. Um, but when you're talking about some of the branches I've got in my big cage, um, one of them, it took six months to dry out. So you do have to kind of bear it, but that's like that thick. It's, it's a big branch. Um, so play it by kind of eye and it is a little bit variable and if you want to check just kind of keep cutting it into the wood a little bit and just check whether it looks green or it looks kind of brown coloured. So what I try and do as well is try and get them reasonably firm particularly for babies um, I'll put a few wobbly things in but in, in the hole for babies I try and make it a little bit more stable and um, at least when they're at this age as they get increasingly more confident I'll make it more difficult for them that's kind of in the name of the game as such. Right, so I've got that. What I'm also going to think about is fall protection. So babies are um, clumsy and I want to give them, whilst, to be honest, even if they fell from the top to the bottom, with the lightweightness that they are and the springy bottom, they're not going to cause any injury. But I like to give them opportunities to catch themselves too. So I've got what's quite a nice um, cargo net here that I'm going to string across in the middle too. Let's see where that goes. Yeah, you have to bear with me on this because I'm learning the cage too as I go. You find that the first few times you set up a cage, it's um, never quite what you wanted it to be. Um, and then by the time you've done it two or three, maybe four times, you'll start to really learn what works for you and your ex. So fastening on at the moment, I'm just using pair, pair um, clips which are like this. Um, I actually prefer um, kind of shower curtain rings, which are similar to this, but kind of see-through and cheap. But apparently I've used them all up. I don't know where all these shower curtain rings go. I'm pretty sure the rats eat them. Um, so I can't currently <laughs> use those. So I've got quite a few pair clips, so they're fine. They'll do. So the babies will probably quite enjoy running across that. Um, what I'm next going to put on is some of the bigger things that I've got to plan around. So they're the kind of hides and nests and such. So I like to focus for, for babies. Um, I don't like to put enclosed beds in there. Um, and this is the same um, if I get babies from somebody else over, let's say, seven, eight weeks. At least for the start, I don't want to put a load of places that they can hide away and um, kind of avoid the world. I like to instead put things that, is, that, that encourage them to kind of participate in the world. That might work. Um, so this kind of thing, so it's open at two sides, but a little bit enclosed, which is quite nice for them. Um, and then I'll use open baskets, open hammocks, etc. I quite like 
series. I have two of them. One of them's in my girl's cage at the moment too. Um, from Mini Pets, should you be interested? Um, I should be on commission for that place. I use quite a lot of it. <laughs> So there we are, it doesn't interfere with the running of the wheel, but actually it also has the advantage of stopping babies for deciding to climb on top of the wheel and then going for a small tour of the wheel diameter, which happens quite a lot. Um, they're not always the brightest when they're trying to work out the world, but that's how they work things out, by getting it wrong. Right, what else do you want to get in? So I'm going to put their hammock back in from their old cage. So this was um, their nest, actually, most recently. Um, that's partly for familiarity, um, partly because um, I quite like this nest, um, but I'll probably change it out in a few days for something different. Um, I'm putting it in the middle um, because I know if I put it at the top, it will be, it'll be their favourite thing very, very quickly. And I actually want to want to encourage them to use some of the other items as well. But I do expect them to start out on this. It tends to be how it happens. Um, and as you can see, this is where cargo necks are quite handy because I can suspend things from it as well, lower down. Um, I could do the same with my branches and so on. Right. You'll notice when I'm putting in baskets and such, I'm putting a little bit of substrate at the bottom. Um, that's just to kind of absorb urine. You could put a bit of litter in the bottom as well, which I probably would do in um, one of my main cages. But I kind of don't always do. And later I'll put a little bit of hay and such for nesting material. I know it's not strictly Halloween, but I like orange, so I have quite a lot of stuff. Um, then I find something that looks pretty and decide I have to put it in the cage and I'll find a place for it. I kind of stick to a lot of natural colours in my main cage, so I quite enjoy it when I have babies because I um, let it go a little bit and, and go colourful. It's always disappointing when you can't quite find a uh, place to fit something or your arms are too short. Right, so that'll be a nice work there. And this is the other thing, I try and work out different routes that they might take, um, just so that I know that they can get everywhere I want them to get. I did have food. where I should have everything planned out that I'm going to put in the cage but that's not how I tend to work so um, it's as I think of something I'd go and have a look around and find it. Um, sometimes I plan things out in advance but it's not so much fun. Right, so that's just a little radiator bed style hammock. I find them really useful for babies. Again, they're quite open, but there's a little bit more shelter there. And they're great for just sticking around as little ledges so that they've got places to stop off. Or if they fall, they haven't got very far to fall. Same for this, I've just got another little one. Um, I might put up here. The only problem is they can be a little bit fiddly to fit in some bars. But that's not bad. Else. So I'm going to add a bit more of kind of more enrichmenty stuff and I probably should get another hammock or two in there as well. Um, so I quite like this. I use this actually as a bit of a um, kind of means of getting up from one level to the other in the old cage. Um, so I'm just going to put it in here as well, just again for a bit of climbing and this time it's free for swinging. And that's partly to teach them about movement and to not worry about it or get stressed. All right, just going to look for another hammock. We have a nice big, very simple open flat hammock that lovely Lisa at Lovecraft made me. Um, again, it's not enclosed, it's nice and open. As much as it's quite cold at the moment, there's enough little bodies and mum in there to keep them more than warm. And there is options to keep themselves warmer as well. Um, so this is more about um, giving them another option to sleep on. Um, 
And if you notice, this is conveniently over the litter tray. So if they start using that, then it's quite easy for them to drop down to that litter tray and start um, litter training themselves. Though I wouldn't be surprised if it's full of cocoons by tomorrow, just because they're still young. I'd be disappointed if it was filled with big poos from Mog though. <laughs> So there we are, we've got another hammock in there. So we've got a couple of hammocks that can be used as a bed and a couple of little shelf things. I'd quite like a little pot. Oh no, I've got the bucket, so that's a pot. Um, I like to offer the kind of different types of bed, um, a bit more interesting for them. Right. Ooh. This might be quite interesting. It tends to be more one of my um, summer things. So it's quite nice and cool for them to lie in, but I could put a little bit of fleece in that and it'd be quite nice. You do have to watch a little bit for them getting paws and such stuck in. So actually I might wait until they're a bit older and slightly bigger. Um, I have got an idea for another one though. Yeah, I probably should have planned this out first. <laughs> I knew I got a coconut out for something. Um, these make in incredibly cute baby beds and um, they're a little bit too small for mum to get into them. Um, but I think they're absolutely adorable with a little baby hedge poking out of them. So where can I put this? Trying to give them enough things to do. Um, that keep them entertained but not make it so that I can never get them out <laughs> apparently coconuts are harder to fit than I thought so I've just used a little bit of wire to go through the holes and um, the coconut actually came from a really big parrot toy which was great value about eight quid and it had loads of those little coconuts on it and a few big ropes and I took it apart and make it, made it into various different toys and I can just change it down again. I think it was Northern Parrots or it might have been Scarlet's Parrots. I get on well with both of them. Right, so a few more connection-y pieces. So these are just designed to kind of keep them balancing. One advantage about um, cargo nets is you can thread through. Right, I'm going to... Um, little grips are quite handy if you can't quite reach something. Um, but you still want it to be secure. That's not bad, and I'll probably add a couple ropes. Basically at this stage, if I see somewhere that hasn't got much of, um, has got quite a big hole, I will fill it with something, um, be it rope or such. And that's because the babies are not going to be quite as um, kind of agile at this stage as they will be later on. So this is all designed to give them um, kind of places to catch themselves on and so on. Um, and it's a bit more for them to interact with. And then I've just got a few like little things for them to chew. Again, I think they had this in their cage earlier, so it's not unfamiliar for them. Um, but it's just, they've already had a bit of a chew of it, and they might as well finish it off. That one needs a bit of wire. Some things you can fasten to are okay, sometimes you just need good old garden wire. If you've not already got a thing, you want to get one. Right, so that's fairly well set up. There's only a few extra things that I need to put in now. So obviously the rats need to drink. They're already using a water bottle, which is brilliant. Um, but I like to offer a water bowl as well. So this is a coop cup, which is my favourite kind of water bowl. 
I like to offer it partly because and um, the rats quite often spla like splashing it, it's quite enjoyable for them. And partly because I find it easier to give supplements. If I'm going to give it in the water, my rats are happier with it in, from a bowl than they are from a cup. Sorry, from, from a bottle. Um, and that's because um, it can get make the bottle quite manky and even when you clean it, you don't seem to ever quite get it out. These are quite useful because the cup just goes and clips in. Um, when you're dealing with babies, you need to be quite careful to not fill it too deep because they're going to fall in at some point because they're a bit idiotic um, and clumsy. Um, so just try and keep it to about a centimetre or two deep and leave it at that until they get a bit bigger and then you don't really have to worry about it anymore. Um, and as per usual in any of my setups, I will have two water bottles um, on the off chance that anything um, any of the water bottles doesn't work there's always a backup option that's also partly why i quite like using um the bowls as well because that's a backup too even if it gets a bit manky um at least you know they've got water um, when you're dealing with babies keep the bottles low um because they've only got little bottles little legs sorry um they do need filling up but i'll fill them up later on so there we have it we've got a good big cage, plenty for the babies to do. Um, what I am going to do is because I don't trust mug morphos in the babies. This is going to be a bulldog clip on the roof and I'll probably put one on the front as well. Um, actually no, that was quite secure. So there's my baby cage all set up, ready for the babies to get in. So I'll go and get them and we'll see what they make of it. <laughs> 